As somebody that shoots a lot of video, storage is a big problem for me. I often am spreading things across multiple hard drives. I have different cloud services for backup and I'm putting some things for a client on Dropbox and some things for a different client on Google Drive. It's all a total mess. So I wanted something that would create a sort of all-inclusive solution that could cover most of my video projects for a long period of time. And I came across RAID drives. So if you clicked on this video, you probably already know what a RAID drive is. Um, there's a bunch of different types of RAID drives. What I wanted to share was some components that I found to put together a 40 terabyte RAID drive for under $1,000. Video footage takes up a lot of space. There's just no way around it, especially if you're shooting 4K or if you just make videos a lot, you've probably run into this problem yourself where you end up with a drawer full of these cheap four terabyte drives that you can get anywhere. That's really not secure because hard drives have have moving parts and eventually they will fail. It's not a matter of if, but when. And so I wanted to make sure that the footage that I did have was backed up and that I was prepared if one of my hard drives did kick the bucket. I've been making videos for many years and some of that footage means a lot to me and I keep everything that I shoot and I keep all of my clients footage and in some cases they spend good money for me to keep that stuff. That footage has a lot of value and so it's really important as video professionals that we have secure backups for the stuff that we shoot. So you're gonna need two things to build your drive. The main thing is the enclosure. This is where your hard drives are gonna live. I'm using the QNAP uh, TR004. I got this off of Newegg for about $200. This part is really important. You wanna make sure that you buy easy store Western digital hard drives from Best Buy. The size and what drives you get depends on the type of RAID that you're going to build, but I would recommend making sure that you buy all the same size and style hard drives just so things are consistent across all of the disks. When you start mixing hard drives, things can get a little bit weird, especially if you want to build them together in a RAID. Now, if you look up a Western Digital 10 terabyte red drive, it's going to run you about 270 bucks. One that's just naked, you buy it, you stick it right in your computer. But what's inside these easy store drives are those Western Digital red drives or white label versions with the same rated speeds. So for a little bit of extra work, you can save yourself about a hundred bucks. These easy store drives go on sale all the time. So you have to keep an eye on the price and buy when they are on sale. I think normally they run about $250, but multiple times a month, these things will go on sale. So just keep an eye on it and you'll find a pretty good deal. Don't be afraid of the labor of taking these drives apart either. It's very easy. And if you just look up how to shuck Western Digital Easy Store, there's a couple of really good tutorials already on YouTube. So I'm just gonna show you real quickly how I did it. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is cut up an old credit card or gift card into four or five pieces. And I found that the rounded edges on the card make this really easy. So what you're gonna use the card for is to separate the outer plastic shell from the inner piece that holds the hard drive on this enclosure. So there's four tabs and you're gonna shove your credit card pieces in between to start to separate that and create a little bit of a gap. You'll slide your card along that edge until you come to one of those tabs. And when you get all four pieces in, it's gonna look something like this. Now that you have all four pieces in, you're gonna need a screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver with a little bit of an edge to it, I found was the easiest way to do this. And along the top and the bottom of the hard drive, right where the front of the case is, you're gonna to wanna to dig that hard drive in and continue to separate that inner piece that holds the hard drive. And when you put your screwdriver in, you'll pry it open until you hear a pop and you'll create a pretty sizable gap. Don't be afraid of that pop. That just means that you've separated it. And once you do that, your credit card pieces won't really be doing anything anymore. They'll just fall out. And you can slide that inner piece right out of the plastic. Now that your hard drive is separated, just lift up on one side of the hard drive and it'll pop out of that case pretty easy. 
Now you'll need a Torx screw to remove the outer screws and a Phillips head screwdriver to take off the piece that's plugged into the SATA port on the hard drive. Now that all your drives are out, you'll just need to put them in the included sleeves for your enclosure using a couple of screws. Typically these tools are included. If you buy the same QNAP that I did, everything will be included in the kit and you just slide them in until they plug in and click everything down. The reason that I chose this QNAP enclosure is because it comes with software that works on Mac that can build the RAID for you. Some enclosures you can find for cheaper, but you're not always gonna have the software that you need. So make sure that you do a little bit of research. Don't make the same mistake I did and buy the wrong enclosure and have to return it and start this whole thing over. I would suggest just going straight for the QNAP one, especially if you're on a Mac. I chose to build what's called a RAID 5, and what that does is stripes the data across all four of my disks, giving me the ability to lose one of my hard drives and I'll still have all of my data. I'll be able to plug in a new hard drive and the system will rebuild itself and I won't lose any data. So up to one hard drive at a time with a RAID 5. For me, that's enough security with other backup solutions that I'm using, but I would suggest that you do your own research about which RAID configuration is gonna work best for you. There's a lot of different options that include direct mirror backups or striping the data across all of the drives for a better speed. But again, I would just look up and see what solution fits your needs the best. Now that this thing is all built, I have 30 terabytes of usable space and 10 terabytes of redundancy. So if I lose one of my drives, I'll slap a new one in and it'll rebuild itself. On top of that, I'm using a service called Backblaze. Now Backblaze is a cloud service that you pay for per computer and it'll give you unlimited storage based off of how many terabytes that you plug into your machine. So by using something like this, you can upload a lot of terabytes to the cloud and that can be your secondary backup. So in my case now, I have the redundancy that's built into the storage from the RAID and the cloud backup should something really bad happen and I lose everything, I know that it's all gonna be safe up in the cloud. I highly recommend that you look up some kind of cloud-based service. There's a ton of different ones out there. Backblaze is just what works best for me and for my needs. Um, but again, there, do your own research and figure out something that's gonna be the best solution for you. Spend a little bit of extra time, go through your old hard drives and see how much of that stuff you need to get backed up. I bet that it's probably time, just like it was for me, that you look at getting that stuff nice and secure.